going to discuss about switch mode power supply or SMPS. So this SMPS is actually a device which is going to take either AC or DC as input and it is going to produce a regulated or constant uh, output DC voltage. Okay. So that is a very brief explanation or working of a SMPS. Okay. Now there are two types of uh, regulators or uh, supply. There is linear regulator and SMPS based regulator. Linear regulator it is actually going to control the flow of current from input to output and uh, input to output and it is going to produce a constant output voltage or constant load voltage. But in SMPS what is going what it is going to do is it is going to chop the input voltage and it is going to control the duty cycle. Based on these two it is going to keep the the average current is constant and hence it is going to give a regulator DC supply. Okay, so SMPS regulates the current flow by chopping the input voltage and controlling the average current by controlling the duty cycle. Okay, so by controlling the duty cycle, it is going to control the average current and it is going to regulate the current flow by chopping the input voltage. So anyhow, it is going to give us a regulated DC supply. So it will be either taking a AC or a DC and it is going to convert that to a regulated DC supply. Okay, so the, this is a very simple block diagram of uh, SMPS. The input is a 50 hertz, so it is a AC. First, we are going to convert that to a DC. Then, we are going to give that to a high frequency converter. There is a control unit. Then, we will be getting a rectified output, rectified and filtered. Okay, so it will be constant and it will be DC. So, and the output side we are going to get a regulated DC. Now this control unit it will be a pulse width modulator control unit. Okay. So this is the basic block diagram of a SMPS. So it is going to take a AC and convert that to a regulated DC. Okay. Now the pulse width modulated SMPS can be classified as two based on the operation. Next we are going to see the two classifications of SMPS. Okay. First one is forward mode switching regulator. So this is the circuit diagram of a forward mode switching regulator. So what all things are present? There is a voltage source here. Then there is a power switch. And the power switch is placed in between the inductor and the voltage source. There is a diode. There is a capacitor which is connected in, in parallel to the load. Now the function of this capacitor is to filter out the ripples or AC components and we will get a regulated DC. Okay. Next let us see the working. So in this uh, category the power switch is placed directly in between the input voltage and inductor. That thing we have already said. Now in between the power switch and the filter there may be a transformer. Okay. You can uh, see here in between the power switch and the uh, inductor. If you want to place a transformer here uh, in some circuits we place a transformer in some circuits we don't place that means there is a provision of placing a transformer there for isolation purpose okay so in between the power switch and the inductor there may be a transformer for stepping up or stepping down the input voltage as a transformer isolated forward regulators okay so for stepping up or stepping down purpose if you want to place a transformer you can place now the two conditions are when the switch is on and when the switch is off let us see the two conditions when the switch is on, the load current passes from the input source through the inductor. We will see the circuit. Okay. So what happens when the switch is on? Means the circuit will be closed. So the current will be flowing through the outer loop. See here. Starting from the source, the current will flow like this. See. There is an outer loop. Right. That is indicating the case when the switch is closed. Okay. So, the load will be getting the supply and the current from the source because there is a complete path between the source and the load. The current will be flowing through the inductor also. Okay. And in this uh, case, that is when the switch is turned on, what will happen is the diode will be in the reverse bias condition and it will not be conducted. So, this is the very brief explanation of when the switch is on. You can see there is an outer loop drawn here for current which is indicating the case when the switch is on. 
when the switch is off what will happen see here you can see that there is an inner loop also see that is indicating the case when the switch is open there will be an open circuit here so when there is an open circuit now the source won't be providing the current in the previous case when the switch was closed or when the switch was turned on the inductor has charged right now in this case the inductor will discharge and when the inductor will start to discharge the current will be flowing like this see here like this the current will be flowing in this loop now in this case since the inductor is providing the uh, the current or the inductor is discharging what will happen is that since the current is flowing in this loop the diode will be conducting or it will be in the forward bias condition okay so this is the case for when the switch is open or when the switch is not i mean it is not turned on or it is turned off okay so when the switch is turned off the inductor will uh, expect the current to flow through it but what happens is that there will be an open circuit and the freewheeling diode will conduct and the inductor will be actually discharging okay and due to the discharging of the inductor the current is flowing in this loop and that is actually the inner loop in this diagram okay so these all things are happening here now when the switch is turned on again consider that you are going to again turn on the switch what will happen the voltage stored in the inductor reverse bias the freewheeling wheel again the diode will stop conducting so you can brief it up like this when the switch is on the diode is not conducting when the switch is off the diode is conducting okay now why this is called forward mode switching regulator why this forward mode is kept is because when you observe the inductor in both the cases when the switch is on and when the switch is off in both the cases the forward current is actually flowing through this inductor due to this we are naming the circuit as forward mode switching regulators okay and the amount of energy being delivered to the load is determined by the duty cycle of the switch and the duty cycle is determined by the equation t on by t on plus t off that is the t on is the time when the switch is on t off is the time when the switch is off so this is the equation for finding the duty cycle so this is the circuit and explanation of a uh, forward mode smps that is forward mode switch mode power supply and if you examine the duty cycle it will be in between 5 to uh, 5 to 95 percentage okay so this is the first case of smps next the second case is flyback the next type of uh, smps is flyback mode smps that is switch mode power supply so this is the circuit diagram of flyback mode here you can see that uh, earlier the power switch was placed in here uh, that is here in place of the inductor now the inductor is uh, placed in between the source and the power switch so the power switch is now coming as parallel now let us see the uh, the cases when the switch is on and when the switch is off okay so when the switch is on the current is uh, been drawing through the inductor it uh, causes energy to be stored in the inductor okay you can see it clearly when the switch is on means there is a closed path formed here the closed path is including the source the inductor and the switch so the switch is closed means there is a closed path so in this case what happens is the uh, charge is drawn or the current is drawn by the inductor and the inductor will get charged okay so in this inner loop uh, the current will be flowing and in this time what happens is that the capacitor will discharge the charge which it has previously stored and there will be a flow of current uh, in the loop there is an output loop with uh, the capacitor and the load and this current is nothing uh, but due to the discharging of the capacitor okay and when the switch is on the diode is not conducting okay next second case when the switch is turned off what happens is that the current cannot um, change the direction instantaneously and it tries to follow the uh, or try to flow in the same direction as before and thus the inductor voltage reverses and this case we call it call as flies back okay so the uh, reversing the voltage or the polarity of the inductor 
is called the flyback condition okay and in this case that is when the switch is turned off the diode will conduct okay let us see the diagram so when the switch is off means there is an open path here now and what happens the current will be flowing in this path and here the polarity of the inductor will be reversed okay and the diode will be conducting in this case okay now since the inductor voltage flies back uh, above the input voltage the voltage that appears on the output capacitor is higher than the input voltage okay so the output voltage will be higher than uh, the input voltage when the switch is turned off okay so this is the case of a flyback smps next so i have discussed that there can be two cases you can either place a transformer uh, in between the power switch and the inductor or uh, you can avoid the transformer okay so there are two cases non transformer isolated smps and transformer isolated smps so in non transformer means there is transformer is not present okay so they are used when some external components pro, component provides dc isolation or protection in place of switching supply so here we are not using a transformer but the uh, isolation is provided by some external component so in this topologies only semiconductors provide the dc isolation from the input to output now the examples uh, of these type of uh, topologies are buck regulator boost buck boost regulator all these are actually examples of non transformer isolated smps here we are not using any transformers in uh, these circuits we have already done videos on these circuits we are not seeing any transformers in the circuit diagrams right next transformer isolated smps means here uh, in this circuit we are using a transformer and this transformer can be either step up or step down if you have to increase the supply voltage uh, i mean the output voltage means we have to use a step up otherwise we have to use a step down and the examples of uh, transformer isolated topologies are flyback regulator push pull regulator half bridge regulator full bridge regulator all these are examples of transformer isolated circuits okay so these are the two classifications one in which we are not using a transformer the next one in which we are using a transformer so we have discussed about smps in this uh, video so smps is switch mode power supply it is actually used for producing a regulated dc output we'll be either taking a ac supply or a dc supply and we'll be converting that to a regulated dc output okay so that is the function uh, of an smps and we have seen talk two uh, types or two configurations of smps one is a forward mode and next one is flyback mode in the forward mode we are actually placing the power switch in series in the flyback mode we are placing the power switch in parallel we have also seen what happens when the switch is turned off and turned on in both the cases okay so this is was a, a quick revision video on smps smps is actually very important topic in power electronics we have uh, uh, we have done a lot of videos on power electronics various topics and those topics are being placed in the power electronics playlist okay so if you are preparing for uh, any uh, semester examinations or, or any interview uh, preparations uh, on power electronics areas those videos will be useful okay also there is quick revision videos towards the end of the playlist so if you are interested please do watch those videos okay so if you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up also share it with your friends and if you are more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching